Welcome to By Faith with Susie and Mike. This program is about regular people who have activated their faith and have done great things for the kingdom of God. When we move, God moves with us. What is God calling you to do today? By faith, obey his voice and enjoy the ride as he does things you could never imagine. Now here's your hosts, Susie and Mike. Welcome to another edition of By Faith with Susie and Mike. And today we have an incredible guest with us. Hey, if you ever, uh, the Bible talks about being an overcomer. And our guest uh, for the next half hour, we're going to talk about Benicia, how she just overcame all these different things in her life. And through her faith in God has built this incredible uh, business. And we're, you're going to hear about how God has really uh, blessed her and her business uh, and it's going to be fun to talk about it. But at first, I just want to talk about your your childhood and uh, how how God really worked in your life. So let's go back to your childhood. Uh, you had to overcome some stuff, didn't you, early on? Yes. So your dad was from Flint, Michigan, and we'll talk a little bit about Flint later. But you grew up in um, L.A. area, right? South Central yes. L.A. Uh, what was it like growing up in South Central L.A.? <laughs> it was fun um but it was a it was a lot of stress yeah a lot of people don't make it out in a successful capacity so right so your mom who was a nurse and every, most of you guys know that Susie Jennings uh she was a nurse before God called her into ministry uh your mom used to work right in Compton as a nurse yes. and she worked long long hours and unfortunately as a young child there you would have to come home and your mom was still at work, right? Yes, yes. And where was your dad? So my dad and my mom divorced when I was about nine years old. Um, but prior to that, working, both parents were working. I was a latchkey kid. So I would let myself in the door, walk home from school, you know. And it probably was about six big blocks as a seven-year-old walking home by myself. Um, letting myself in, feeding myself, doing my own homework, waiting until my mom got in. And if she worked overtime, you know, I'm home until 9, 10 o'clock at night by myself, getting myself ready, bathing myself, and then getting ready for school. So so you unfortunately learned independence, probably not the way a, a child of that age should learn it. Who in that era um, sort of helped you along the way? And how did you eventually come to the faith and, and meet the Lord Jesus Christ? So my mom came to the United States from Guatemala, and so she was Lutheran. But in the United States, we don't have a lot of Lutheran churches. So she put me in private school. So I used to go to Christian school. I started Christian school from K to like third grade. Then I went to Catholic school. So I got a taste of all the different denominations. Um, so that kind of instilled in me faith and understanding God and you know, walking with the Lord. And of course you have a religion class where you can go to private school, it's mandatory. So by even, even if it wasn't a choice, you are definitely gonna learn who God is. But um, in the household, my mother believed in God. We weren't in the church every weekend. However, it was like, wherever you are is church, four walls is church. If you're in your car, it's church. You can just call God if you need him. And so I was taught that from when I was a little kid, yeah. And you know, I think that's stuck with you throughout your entire life because yes. even now, you know, God is in your business. Yes. And you talk about how the Bible is really your your game plan and your book, yes. even as you run your company. Uh, so that was instilled at, as a young age. Uh, when you think back to your childhood and you remember having to walk home in rough areas, you had to go past, right, drug dealers yes. and prostitutes. And you had to walk actually uh, past people where drug deals are taking place. Um, you didn't know anything else, but did, did you have fear as a young child? No, uh, it was very gang infested uh, neighborhood. If you were not a part of a gang, you were affiliated. It's almost like, you know, one or the other, a double edged sword. So you either had to participate so you don't get terrorized or you know someone who can protect you from being terrorized. So how at that young age, when you would walk home and come home, was there somebody that protected you? Did you have an aunt, an uncle? Was there someone that was sort of looking out for you? Yeah, I did. My friends, you know, I hung with the people that you just know. You just become a part of a group, even though you're not the one that's actually doing it. You know, you, you become just a part of the pack. So being a part of that pack 
kind of protected me. I never really got into a lot of issues. Well, that's really amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, how How's your relationship with your mom these days? So my mom passed two years ago, oh. um, but we are very close. My mother's like my best friend. So she still is my best friend, even though she's not here. Um, so she's missed, but yeah, she passed on. So you and your mom had an incredible moment. Here you are, you're, you're learning to be independent, not by choice, but just because of the environment you were in. But you were still going to school and working hard uh, and learning to take care of yourself in a, in a very rough environment. Uh, and then you're 15 years old. And one day you and your mom go to the mall, right? Yeah. And, and your life sort of gets turned upside down, which by the way, I could sort of see, you know, God's fingerprints uh, in this, yes. you know, he, he was, he knew what you were going through, mm -hmm. but what happened when you and your mom went through the mall at age 15, okay. sort of turning point? Yeah. So a sunny day, we're walking through the mall. It's great. A guy walks up to us. He says, I want you to model for the gap. And I'm like, okay, I'm tall. I'm like five, nine at this point, 15 years old. And I didn't see it, but for some reason, I was led to sign on the dotted line right then and there. We walked right into a Gap store. He took us into the back room. I had never been in a back room in a mall before where the employees go. And I signed a contract with no attorneys, anything like that. So I will say God has protected me. He's been looking out for a long time. But um, from that faithful day, I was able to get into the entertainment business and have a successful career. But it all started with that guy scouting me and finding me in the mall. So that's incredible. So at age 15, you're going to school still, right? Yeah. And now you're a model. Yeah. Just like that just overnight. Like that. And, and then you go on and you uh, get your college education. Uh, wait till I tell you about all the things that has happened in this woman's life. It's actually incredible. Uh, she's been on the, um, been recognized by Forbes magazine, as well as Black Enterprise magazine. And I will tell you, it's incredible when you think what God has done in and through you, especially with the obstacles that you had to overcome. Let me, uh, let's just pause on that for a minute. For, for those who are in those environments right now, because you have really, uh, you have a successful business and things are really going well for you. Do you have a heart for those people when you think about what they have to go through since you had to walk in those shoes? Absolutely. My goal is to help as many people as I can to make the announcement that I am providing a service for people who are like myself, who have maybe have challenges in life. Maybe they were teen mothers. You know, everybody's not, you know, born with extra. And so with that being said, my goal is to just empower as many people as I can that come from the environments that I have been exposed to as well. So when you go to school, right, you're in college and you're doing the model thing at the same time, uh, you, you, actually, you actually went into the Air Force yeah. uh, for a short period. How did that door open? <laughs> so I was in college, um, just had my backpack on one day and my, my professor said, wait a minute, don't, don't go yet. And so he just starts having a, just a friendly conversation. I think he was just really trying to get to know who I really was because I was always smart. I never really um, carried books. I never really studied before tests. I always just got stuff really quick. And so he said, what, what are your goals? What do you want? What do you want to do? And I just spit out, I want to work for the IRS. I didn't even know what the IRS was. I was just young and just saying something. And then he went, he said, hold on for one second. He took out a sticky pad. He wrote on the sticky pad, call this number in two years. He gave it to me. And I was probably like the kid on the movies looking at this paper, walking with a backpack, like, what am I going to do with this paper in two years? And so I had a group of friends that, would, that they were joining the army and um, I didn't want to do the army. That was not for me. Did Just you, did you want perception. to do the Air Force? Was no, that, no, none of it. Okay. I didn't want to do any of this. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, what can I do for four years or whatever? Call this number in, in a certain amount of time. So um, I just went to the parking lot with all the different Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force. And um, I looked in the Marines. I said, nah, I saw the Army. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> Navy, I can't swim. Air Force. And I peeked in there, and there were two guys hanging in there, and they were just like, hey, what's up? And they felt like me. Yeah. And I, I just went in there, and I signed up that day. I'm always signing up something on that day, but I signed up that day, and I went home and told my mom, I'm going to the Air Force. What'd your I'm mom like, say? what? <laughs> <laughs> but she supported me, and it was, it was fantastic, so... 
tell me a little bit about your mom. You know, Susie Jennings, who's the president and founder of Operation Care. She she was a nurse yes. before God called her into ministry. Your mom yes. was a nurse. Yes. Uh, there's something about a nurse. It is. They're, they're just amazing. Built. Yeah. So the, the qualities of your mom that you loved yes. and that are in you now um, and what she's taught you, what, what would you say when you think of your mom? Describe her. Um, caring, selfless, patient, honorable, um, distinguished, valuable, things that I think a nurse, they display. And, you know, she's just a fantastic mom. So. And uh, about, tell me about her faith. Oh, she loved God. Yeah, she loved God. Even up until, I mean, the beginning all the way to the end. Of course, you know, when you get down to the end, you're like, oh, God, help. Yeah. But no, she really was a person who led with that. And she was never cursed, didn't drink, never smoked. Just one of those kind of people that just an honorable human being. And so. She must be really proud to I see so. where you landed. Did I, she ever I tell know. you that? Oh, yeah. All That's the time. Cool. Yeah. That's great. She said, you're my best friend. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Told me a lot of great things that helped me um, become a good person. So we just touched upon your dad for a short period. How was your relationship with your dad? And I wanna share something that you spoke about related to your dad in a minute. Uh, tell me about your relationship with your dad. So I think girls have this thing with their dads. They wanna be like their dads. I look like my dad. So it's kind of like, you know, he was just someone that I really, really looked up to. My dad, he can sing and I always wanted to sing like my dad. So I would go in my room and have the tape recorder and I'd press record and I'd sing into it because I wanted to be like my dad. Um, but there were some missing parts. And I think obviously it doesn't come with a book. So we, you know, he was young and maybe he just didn't understand the detriment of not being there in certain places at certain times for me. But um, my dad lives in Dallas and I moved here because he's here. And so I've been able to build a relationship with my father that I feel is unbreakable. So I'm one of his children and he has a few that have always stuck by him. I'm named after him. So it, it doesn't matter all the, in any like missing parts of it, I respect my father, I honor him and I do him like I would do God. So, you know. You know what I love about what Jesus does in all of our lives? He redeems things. Yes. And he reconciles things and, re, you know, to restore it to how it was supposed to be. Yes. And as you talk about your dad there, and I know as a young child, you used to sit by the window, right? Yes. And you used to look out the window and you would wait for him to come home. Uh, many times he didn't come home, but look how God could even restore something that was completely broken yes. and then restore it at where now you have a, a wonderful uh, relationship, which, which by the way, you're showing tremendous grace, right? That, yes. which grace, which God has shown to us. Yes. Um, so what we're going to do guys is we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about our uh, Flint, Michigan connection. We're going to talk about how you started your own business, incredibly successful uh, real estate business. By the way, uh, she, she actually has a bank. So not only does she, can she get you a loan? She has the bank. So God's done incredible things and she's overcome so much. We're going to talk more with our guest right after this break. It was really clear that he wanted me to, to do something different. You don't just believe it, you start to act upon it. Any of us can do those things. You don't have to be good enough or worthy enough. God gives you what you need in that moment if you're willing to accept it. What if the church actually embraced the Great Commission? We'd flip the world upside down. Welcome back to By Faith with Susie and Mike. And Susie, you, Susie's back with us. You see Susie right there. She made it. And Susie, what's your, what's your question for our great guest today? Well, Denise? I am so excited to see Naomi Campbell. <laughs> 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 Did you see that? Yeah. She's so beautiful. <laughs> but anyway, of course, she's not Naomi Campbell. She has a, a beautiful name, Benicia, right? And uh, well, we have uh, one thing in common, your mother a nurse and I, I also am a nurse. I'm not a nurse anymore. I'm a missionary now for the homeless. 
Well, of course, a nurse is always a nurse. We, your mom was in a caring business and I was in a caring business and I continue to be in a caring business because now we are in homeless ministry helping the poor and um, impoverished. I have a question for you. Uh, uh, you say the Bible is your to go to book for business. Yeah. Uh, how does that work for you and explain? Please. <laughs> so the Bible can give you so much guidance. It can teach you strength when you need it. Mm -hmm. You need that in business when you're dealing with people. It will teach you honesty, integrity. Uh, sometimes people come in, they try to get you to do certain things that you know is not right, right? And um, it has just, it's just a go-to. It can teach you love, it can teach you respect. So I turn to the Bible for everything. There's nothing that the Bible can't help me with. It's the oldest book, and it's the best book out there. Right. And by the way, um, for us in our, our staff meeting, we usually would read Proverbs because that's the book of wisdom. So whatever day it is, that's what we read. Yeah. You know, if it's uh, today's the 29th, so we would read Proverbs 29 when we do our staff meeting. And that's where you get wisdom. And yes, the Bible, that's the best place to go in any kind of challenge in your life. Go to the Word. If you're having some difficulties, go to the Word. And we're glad that's, that's your kind of your guideline and guide for your life direction, getting direction. So you say that God is in the driver's seat. You ever hear the song, Jesus, take the wheel? Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's been taking the wheel and you've been on this incredible God ride, you know, from an early age and you, you, you've sensed God there with you. It's been a lot of hard work for sure, but God's opened doors and he's moved. Um, tell us about how you now as the leader of your company and, and as God continues to open doors, how do you show your faith to the people that you work with? Sure. I kind of want to tell you a story about how I got to Jesus driving my bus. Yes. Um, I'm going to keep it short. So I was working corporate America. I was transferred to Dallas, Texas. I get in my corporate job. I'm working diligently as I should and doing the best, being the best Benicia I can be. And I'm getting all these accolades. However, I'm not getting a step up. I can go lateral, but I'm never progressing. And I, I was putting in for promotion, which I came here for one year for an assignment. And after that one year, I was supposed to go and transfer to another location, most likely outside of Texas. Texas is probably one of the hardest places to get into because it's very, um, um, people want to be here. Mm -hmm. So when you get transferred into this position, you know you're probably not going to stay. Probably end up in New York where no one wants to go. I had been putting, putting in for promotions, but I was not getting moved. And I was still here in Dallas, Texas. And I'm like, okay, God what's happening here because I should have been out of here. And so I just started praying and asking God for strength and then praying and asking God for guidance. And then the footprint, footprint picture where you put your footprints down and you know God's walking next to you. you see, you're walking, but these footprints are there, but you don't see anyone. You remember that mm -hmm. picture? Yeah. And I said, God, I'll just put your footprints down. I'll walk in it. And I just start sac like sacrificing myself to God, like every like shedding my skin. Mm -hmm. It was like, what, what do you want me to do? I feel like you're, you're doing something to change my direction and my trajectory for some reason. And um, finally, after praying for eight months, God spoke to me. He said, get a real estate license. Mm -hmm. And but prior to that, my prayer was my last prayer was God take the wheel. Mm -hmm. And it's like the Jesus take the wheel. Funny thing, right? Yeah. No, but I was serious. Like, please, I need you to just drive this car because I can't. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm going and I need you. And when I said, I'll just sit in the back of an eight passenger van. I envisioned a white van with the windows, the seats, and I was going to go in the back seat and I was going to strap myself in because I know that if I do that, whatever's happening at the wheel, I can't reach it. Mm -hmm. And if it goes off a cliff and I die, that is God's will. That's how I have to just shed myself. And when I did that, God spoke to me. I heard a voice and it said, get a real estate license. I got up from praying. And I went to my laptop and I typed in real estate and a school popped up. And that school brought me to passing the test, getting a license, and then a career change that I thought walking in the mall and modeling and having that, that was something that was going to be major. But this completely changed my life. So Jesus Take the Will means a whole lot to me because I 
really truly lived in that and um, it has shaped me to where I am today. So when I speak to people and I tell them my story, the first thing about, oh my God, you own a bank or oh my God, you've done so much. And it's like, no, no, let me take you back to where it really started. And I really did shed myself and everything about me to become what God says we are supposed to be. And that's 100% for him and allowing him to make our decisions because our plan is not God's plan, so. Yeah, you know, Proverbs 16, nine, Susie says, man has many plans in their hearts, but it's the Lord who directs our steps. And you know, Benicia, what you did is you surrendered, right? You said, yeah. you basically said, okay, and look what God has done and continues to do. Uh, what an amazing story. By the way, she owns her own bank, Susie. <laughs> she's not just, a, she does not a developer only or, or a real estate agent or a company. She actually, she gives you the loan, which is incredible. I mean, how did that come to be? Hmm. Okay, so I was selling real estate, meeting tons of people, um, engaging with many, many people. My first year in real estate, I sold over 200 homes and the average realtor sells eight. Wow. So my second year, I did over 350. The average agent still sells eight. I was able to meet so many people in the Dallas Metroplex and outside because I was helping a lot of people move into the area as well. Developers, investors, regular consumers. It just kept, just, it just kept getting traction like a bit a snowball and it just became a huge, huge, but it wasn't the snowball that terrorized the stuff. It was a snowball that is like great, right? You were on what we call the God ride. I was on the you God ride. You were on the God ride. Yeah. By faith. Yeah. So that has put me in position to meet so many different people. I started speaking right around coronavirus. I started speaking at events and um, today I do about seven to 10 events per month wow. that I speak and I tell my story. Um, but I was speaking in Houston and at the, after the event, someone pulled me to the side and said, hey, I heard your story. Would you be interested in owning a bank? I'm like, I don't know anything about a bank. I sell real estate. I'm an agent. I can sell the heck out of a house, but yeah. I don't know anything about that. And they were like, um, no, you don't have to own the bank. I mean, you don't have to do loans. You don't have to originate loans. As the person signing off, you can just be the owner wow. because doctors do not own the clinics that they work in. There's someone who owns that building. And I'm like, oh my God, you're right. So from that point, um, it took me about two weeks and I was up and running as a federally chartered bank. Wow. And there was a, some vetting in the background, but nevertheless, it was stuff that God provided for me. And um, the rest is history. That's amazing. Well, Benicia, that's truly an amazing, uh, amazing testimony of God's faithfulness in your life. And as uh, what you could see our podcast is uh, by faith, hear, believe, and move. Yes. So you did that uh, by faith. You trusted the Lord that uh, as God leads the way, uh, I told also our staff that just let God drive that uh, bus and just enjoy the ride and you could feel just the wind you know just with freedom in it knowing you're happy knowing that somebody's driving for you and knowing that the right person is driving and that's our Lord driving for you just enjoy the ride but that takes a lot of faith mm. and you have a lot of faith because uh, as you said you run your business by faith yeah. so explains how that work explains to our uh, sure. listener so I trust God Whatever is going to happen is what is supposed to be. Yeah. If I do not do business with you, it's okay. It wasn't yes. in our it takes wheel. the pressure off. It takes the pressure yeah. off. So now I'm looking like her <laughs> and I'm sitting on the <laughs> suitcase. It. Yes. And it's great. I have absolutely no stress, even though I'm running a business with yes. 62 people. Mm -hmm. I have people's lives in my hands. I have to pay individuals. I have mm -hmm. 200 real estate agents that are looking up to me all wow. across the United States. I have to make sure that these people get enough. Um, information to go and make money. But I'm, I, at the end, I'm like her. So some people may feel pressure, but maybe because they don't put faith first. Mm -hmm. And God just removes anything that is blocking me. And it just, my path has just been up from when I let God drive my bus. It's been up. It's just yeah. been up. So when you look at this young girl here in the picture, and it reminds me of when you were, you know, seven, eight, nine years old. Mm -hmm. If you right now could go back and talk to the seven-year-old mm -hmm. who had to walk home from school, yes. go by the gangs, go by the prostitutes, go by uh, drug deals, and 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 you had to, be, you were forced to be independent. Um, you would wait for your dad; he wouldn't come home, and you you just had every imaginable obstacle in front of you. What would you go back and tell that girl today? 
Um, I would tell her, you know, everything that I have been a part of was for, it was for a good experience. I wouldn't change it because I feel like it has built me into a person who kind of, I understand all kind of walks of life. I'm not one dimensional or two dimensional. I'm multi-dimensional. And so I have been able to get into rooms. I've been in the White House. I've worked in places that people probably can't even imagine. <laughs> I won't tell you this time, but I'll tell you another time. <laughs> but um, but I, I, I definitely have been in spaces. Oh, you got it. Come on. You can't. Okay, okay, okay. You know why? Our viewers are not going to let me off the hook okay, if okay, I just okay. let that go. Okay, so I will say that um, for 20 years, I was a federal agent. Wow. I worked undercover. Wow. So um, I worked for a government entity. Wow. Um, so that put me in position where, from the Air Force, I was able to get into a lot of different things outside of the military. But my career with the United States government uh, was very, very um, dangerous, mm -hmm. to say the least. And I think because of my life skills of growing up in South Central L.A., and um, getting into law enforcement, I mean, the best cop is someone who can think like a criminal. Mm -hmm. So, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you can kind of infiltrate things that, you know, a, a person who they may consider a square can't get into. Mm -hmm. So it has made me into a person that, you know, this isn't great. <laughs> God doesn't waste anything. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Benicia, I mean, I believe Benicia is probably the most amazing uh, guest that we ever had here. I mean, with the experience she had, it is so incredible. And your heart, mm. you just, I mean, it's, it's, it just aligns with Operation Care and what we believe, everything you've said by faith, you know, and, and then you let God drive. That's what we, uh, that's what we do. I mean, we allow God to drive all the time because we could not do it. Actually, we carry Jesus, you know, in our set, in our in our office, uh, Jesus is always the head. In our uh, room where we have our board meeting, yeah. Jesus has a seat he's there right because he's always <laughs> the one that carries us. So the faith that you have and the trust that you have, you're enjoying the ride. And God gave you so much favor because you gave him glory, honor, and praise, and even with your business. And you, you have a double major in political management and also was in the Air Force and a lawyer. Wow. I mean, and for her from the beginning, I believe God has his hands on you since you were a little yes. child. Yeah. And, and so God loves you so much. And that's the same to all of you listeners. God loves you so much that regardless of what you go through, just trust the Lord to be the one driving the wheel. Just give him um, everything you have. Just give it to him. And if something happens bad, remember the verse. And we know all things work together for good. And I like your thing like, okay, just like uh, I'm going to relax and let God handle it. And if something that, something that will happen really bad, it's okay. God will turn it if you give it to him. And that's what. Uh, our lives have been. I yeah. mean, me and my uh, story of how my husband committed suicide. And after that, look what God has done. Uh, took me out of my comfort zone and made me a uh, missionary for the homeless. Uh, but I had to go through that tragedy so my heart could be tender towards mm -hmm. the poor and the homeless. Mm -hmm. And you, you've been through a, a, you know, a difficult childhood as well. And see what God has done through you. Mm -hmm. Like from uh, just a... Uh, Tragedy to triumph from a mess to a message. Mm. That's yeah. what God is. So, Benicia, I mean, it's incredible to look back and reflect on all the things God has done and what he's going to continue to do. And, you know, we always uh, end our program every time by sharing the good news. And there's a reason that it's called good news, friends. It's because it is. I always say, why do they call the gospel good news? Because it's good news. There's forgiveness in our sins when we put our faith and trust in Jesus. And it's as simple as that. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know, I love that you said you heard his voice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you hear his voice today, I want you to respond. Susie, how do you respond? Oh, it's very simple. Trust the Lord. And she's doing that. A, B, C. Simple. A, accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. B, Believe that he's the only way. See, confess that you're a sinner. If you do that, God is going to take over and he will drive the wheel for you. 
So I would like to lead yeah, us in prayer. Pray. Okay, let's pray. Father God, uh, Lord Jesus, I accept you as Lord and Savior. I believe that you are the only way. I confess that I am a sinner. So please help me. I trust that you will continue to guide every steps of the way. I need you. Save me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. See you God next time. You.